Electric vehicles are fantastic. The punch that you get with the instant throttle response, the insanely good efficiency, the crazy low running costs, and the time savings if you can charge at home or work are all fantastic benefits. The problem is the public charging network and the apparent 30% of UK households that can't charge at home. So let's talk about it. The public charging network, according to ZapMap, is made up of a little over 20,000 charger locations and nearly 34,000 chargers. Compare that to the number of petrol stations where there are only about 8,400 in total. Well, it sure sounds like we have plenty of chargers already available. But of course, there is a, a pretty huge difference, which is the time spent at those stations. When filling up with petrol or diesel, you spend around like five minutes filling up. Whereas for an EV, even at the fastest 350 kilowatt chargers, a full charge takes between 15 and 20 minutes. But seeing as there are only a handful of those chargers in the UK at all, and only a handful of cars that can support charging at that speed anyway, you're more likely to be using one of the 4,000 rapid chargers instead. Those are between 25 and 99 kilowatts, and those can take more like an hour or more for a full charge. The vast majority of the chargers uh, that are what ZapMap calls fast, basically anything from 7 to 22 kilowatts are basically all of the public AC fast chargers. Well, I'm not sure that I would call those all that fast, because even for a small top up on a small car like the Renault Zoe, at 7 kilowatts, a full hour of charge would only net you just 14% more battery level, or something like 20 miles more range. So if the vast majority of chargers are likely to be tied up for hours at a time, you start to realize just how many chargers we actually need. Even if there was one charger for every 10 cars on the road, we would still need over 3 million chargers, or about 100 times more than what we have now. On top of the sheer quantity, the horrendously fragmented system makes the whole process a lot more annoying. You want to charge the, the pod point chargers in Tesco's car parks? Cool. You need the pod point app and an account with them. Oh, if you want to charge, say, the BP Pulse Charger instead. Well, you could pay with your contactless card, except if you pay with their paid membership, you get 20% off the charging costs. Now, I'm happy to say that a lot of the brands are doing away with that sort of subscription and going the flat rates, but there's also another catch. Because of the average time at the station being so high, if you arrive at a charging point with fairly little charge left in your car, and find that that charger that you're going to is broken or, more importantly, in use, you'll either have to try and find another station within your drivable range and hope that that one is also available, or wait even longer for the space just to be free to then start charging. Now, the good news is that EV adoption isn't quite at the point where the existing charging network is completely overwhelmed but it also isn't that far from it. With most chargers or charging locations only offering one or two chargers at that point, it doesn't take much for you to be quite out of luck. It's also worth noting about just how much energy we use per year on transport here in the UK. We travel around 280 billion miles per year in our cars, which at a generous 40 miles per gallon average means that we use something like 32 billion litres of fuel. Depending on how efficient the engines are at converting that fuel into power, you could expect anywhere between sort of 2 and 4 kilowatt hours of power from that litre of fuel. Even being generous in saying that it's only 2 kilowatt hours, that means to replace all the cars on the UK's roads, you would need to find an extra 65 gigawatt hours of power per year. If you're less optimistic, that could be as high as 150 gigawatt hours instead, which is about 50% more energy than we currently use nationwide. And this isn't just a UK problem either. 
California had to ask its residents to not charge their EVs to reduce strain on their grid over a swelteringly hot summer. Especially with the temperatures rising here in the UK, that could even be a concern here too, and would only worsen if the grid needed to supply 50% more energy annually. It's worth noting a significant factor in this discussion though, which is that the way that you live with an EV is pretty different from the way you live with an internal combustion engine car. With say my Audi S4, the only choices I have when it comes to fueling it are which station to go to and how long do I leave it between fill-ups. Generally you run it to mostly empty and then you go fill it up to the brim and that's it. You need, to, you need fuel when you need fuel, and you go detour your route to get more. But with an EV, especially if you can plug it in at home or at work, how much charge you have becomes irrelevant for everyday travel because, well, it's pretty much always full. It's plugged in at home or at work, you're all topped up and ready to go wherever you fancy. It's only when you need to go on longer journeys that the public charging network becomes a concern. Of course, that's a pretty privileged position to be in, being able to charge at home or work, so for those that can't, well, it's a bit more of a concern. Sure, you can plug it in at Tesco when you go for your weekly shop, but even at 7 kilowatts and a full hour of shopping, you'll only get around 10% of a charge. So what can we, or the collective we that is, do about it? Well, I would start with both local and national government support. On the national level, some requirements for standardization for pricing, for example, BP will charge a regular non-registered, non-subscription you know, customer 65 pence per kilowatt hour at a 50 kilowatt DC fast charger, whereas they will charge the same member if they happen to be a paying subscription member just 52 pence per kilowatt hour. GridServe will charge you 48 pence per kilowatt hour at the same 50 kilowatt DC fast charger, and Instavolt now charges a flat fee of 66 pence per kilowatt hour. That is a huge difference for the exact same product, and often functionally from the same location. On the local level, councils can install chargers themselves. It's a great way to collect more tax revenue to help improve the local area even more without actually increasing tax revenue, or at very least provide funding and incentives to private companies to do it instead. Equally, a push for more renewable sources of power like wind and solar, especially near to the chargers, would be great too. But the real solution to this is pretty simple. Better public transport. No, seriously, the more people who can commute to work or go to the shops by bike, bus, or train, or tram, the less electric vehicles we need in the first place. The less space they take up in rush hour traffic, the less environmental destruction is needed for lithium mining or child labour exploitation for mining cobalt. The cheaper and easier the public transport is, the better a town or city will be. The solution for all of those people that can't charge at home, and even the ones who can, is to not need the cars in the first place. So in order of importance, I would rank the uh, possible solutions as better public transport, better public transport, better public transport, more you know, standardization and requirements. That's kind of how I would, I would lay that stack out. Um, if you have any thoughts yourself, I would love to hear them in the comments down below. Uh, if you have any other suggestions for ways that you know, things can be improved, or if you think that I'm uh, you know, out of touch of the, uh, the market and, uh, or have missed something, feel free to let me know in the comments down below as well. If you want to see more videos, possibly like this one, possibly more things like car reviews and you know, tutorials on how to fix your cars, then feel free to check out that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon and check out plenty of the other videos on the end cards. I've got a fair few of them now. Otherwise, that's kind of it. I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.